Well, good morning. I would like to briefly describe how print catalogs or channels can be created in InRiver and release. And I'm building upon what we just said before when we heard about InRiver. As the next step, uh, a few words on the Hurl company. We are based in Stuttgart, were established in 2009 and uh, focus on publishing. This is our background, but uh, we're also involved in PIM and DAM in implementation and in consulting. Uh, somebody said a minute ago that the data flows. Yes, and River is a data flow, a data stream. And we are making sure that this is not rapids, but that you're always moving uh, in calm waters. Well, um, Oh, we are 25 employees, have over 60 active customers and um, around 10 partner companies that we cooperate with. Well, a few words on me. My name is Ralf Skalder, as I said before. Uh, I have been uh, working in PIM and DAM matters uh, for eight years. I'm also involved with uh, publishing through PIM. And I've, uh, with, I've been with, company, with the company Hurl for over three years before. I worked as a PIM and DAM consultant with the Harbour Company. So I know both sides. And I am a business consultant for PIM and DAM systems at the Hurl Company and also a company our customers and one of them is here today <laughs> um, and a Nerva customer even. What would I like to show you in concrete terms today? First of all, I'm going to show you how to manage in River catalogs, how you create them, what's uh, the underlying sense. We saw a few things uh, already and then I will speak on how to do it for web shops um, because the, the way uh, route is similar then I will touch upon how this can look for um, print systems and how you release all the data and then I will briefly uh, speak about uh, how we approached a concrete case to um, use uh, in river for print and I guess we will have some time for questions afterwards so um, so your questions will be welcome later. Well, catalog management in, in River. It usually starts with uh, product data. This is a brief extract of the River system. It's a demo system and this is why it does not contain lots of uh, um, maintained data. We have product data, the system is implemented, and what do we do next? How do you release this data? Um, just having a PIM with data doesn't really make sense. It's nice, but I really want to do something with this data. So I have my product data and I want to release them. I will want to take them somewhere. Well, usually to a web shop, the print catalogs, flyers, maybe newsletters, but also marketplaces and, and other things, uh, um, retailers, customers, whoever wants to consume these uh, product data um, somehow ha has to get them out of the system. And in River, it looks like this. There's this one... Uh, full function of plan and release and you can already see that it is broken down into channels and publications. The channels can be of different characteristics. This can be an e-commerce web shop uh, where we release data. It could be Amazon although it has to be said that um, you actually use a different functionality in Innerva uh, for marketplaces and this is the syndication. This was already mentioned today uh, to have the data in the right format released to the marketplace. Last week we had a seminar with Innerva and if you like you can have the link to the seminar. And we did this with our customer, Victor Inox. What else can it be? A content store. Well, you may wonder what a content store is. A content store is an inner river functionality that uh, allows you to uh, release uh, product data like in a web shop. So the data can be compiled in a channel and then say, well, this is the data I want to release via this channel. 
and uh, I can uh, give access or grant access to various persons. It's a, a web shop for data. So the product data can be released or consumed as uh, images or as an Excel spreadsheet for retailers, for customers, whatever. And you can create different ones, different content stores, just the way I like it. And I can include various channels. It is also possible uh, to create something for Google. If I, for instance, say I want to push my data to Google, then this is also possible here. What else do we have? Another content store and maybe other marketplaces. That's one thing. Channels. Um, everything uh, stores, web shops, but there are also the publications. And I think I th this is self-explanatory. This is all of the printed matters I wanted to produce. This is uh, also digital publishing, not necessarily on paper. The point is just to put a bracket around my product, so to speak, and to release them. We will later uh, speak about uh, this in concrete terms um, when I tell you how to um, edit this data. So this is, for instance, my target, Google, and I push my products into this channel and can then release them. This can be Google, but it can be Amazon, but it could also be a web shop. Well, what does it look like at a web shop? Well, when you actually access such a channel, then you have like a dashboard. Here the user sees one big overview and how this channel is filled. This means how many nodes I've created how many items or uh, products are included in this channel, how many images or resources, resource means uh, image, but could also be a PDF, can be anything uh, connected or linked to the entity. So everything is uh, can be linked in, in River and released. This could also be specifications. This is a special entity that ends technical specifications for uh, an item that you want to um, add or assign to a product. What else do I see? Complete bliss. You can actually lay down rules uh, in, in River that show you whether a product is complete. And here you can also see very nicely whether my channel complies with certain requirements. How many products are included? How many of these products are complete? By the completeness rules, I can also see how many items are included. How many products are there? Short descriptions. Do we have an image um, that is has been updated. Do the images comply with my requirements? Is it high resolution images or do I have images that do not comply with the usual requirements? The aim of all of this is uh, to give the user like an instruction what to do. Uh, he would enter the system and his channel and he knows exactly what to do. If uh, this uh, the customer then actually access the uh, channel, he can also create structures. Each one of these nodes uh, that we saw before can have own characteristics or features. They either contain specific entities, some entities have been just specified recipes, bundles, products, resources. It looks a little bizarre, but this is because this is a demo system and it was created for many target group, that's why. The benefit is that uh, under details you can also create your own metadata. So each one of these nodes I have can have its own metadata, um, headings, chapters, text. And with this node, I can also save images saying, I want to have a specific image for this node. And this works for the e-commerce like for the print channel. How do I get the products in? Either I en enter them by a click and drop or I uh, opt for an automated version. This is what this would look like. So I uh, create a query or a rule that tells me 
all of the products, take all of the products uh, under the category of drills and uh, push them into the drills node. I could also uh, say only include the, the products with a certain completeness, only the products uh, with a um, uh, produced in the year XY. And depending on how well my uh, data is updated, I can specify the rules very precisely. In the case of print, for instance, you could say I have a field next to my product. This is um, designed for or needed for the main catalog 2024 and this would also be included. This makes it easier because I do not have to actually enter thousands products manually. In InRiver you could also use the mass data management tool for this. Once we're done with this we can actually release this complete channel. This means uh, this is for retailers, this is available for uh, a web shop, another retailer, and the customer is happy because they have the product data and can actually enhance their product experience. Here you also have the overview, do the uh, data fit and when, I, when they're released I know they fit and with the digital shelf I can always check and revise uh, whether I've probably made a mistake. Well, uh, an analogy, this also works for print systems. So uh, for publications it looks very much the same. The names are different. Instead of nodes I have uh, sections to the right. Why have we uh, selected a different name? Because these entities all have metadata and they are created globally. So if I assign um, metadata for a node then I would have the same here. And This is why I refer to it as sections so we can actually assign other metadata and clearly distinguish. Uh, here for the sections uh, you can also update the metadata, chapter headings and so on and so forth. Again I have an overview uh, what, when, what, what was last updated and I can see my structure. So I create the structure for my catalog here and can release it in exactly the same way through the system. And once I've updated the data I can also release the metadata with this node. Well, um, now we've done all of this in PIM, we've uh, got the data, we've built the structures, we've got the product data, everything is nicely maintained, but now how do we actually turn this or convert this into a catalog or a PDF file? We could type it in manually, which would not make a lot of sense. And there we really benefit from the REST RP, the REST API. Through the REST API you can actually um, process and edit everything. It is very open, this REST API, and through the REST API we can also serve print systems. So Google, for instance, can be fed through the REST API, or even uh, retailers can be served, and print systems, or the print suit, for instance. I have brought an overview uh, for Swagger, uh, what the REST API can do. And again, in River is very open there and uh, uh, actually releases to interested party what is needed. And I can tell you that everything is possible. Any entity uh, or so-called object can be selected. I can pick any channel with the underlying data. I can look uh, which media I included. I can look at the data model. I can also pick the syndication um, if I don't release it automatically. And I can also have system information um, displayed. This is really important so that the connected systems uh, get all of the information we've updated. If otherwise it would only be a PIM skin or envelope, so to speak, without any underlying data, and this would make sense. Well, you saw 
this was just a very brief overview of how you do it. Um, in contrast, uh, well, unlike the moon landing, InRiver is not rocket science. It's very easy to handle. Users find it easy to handle. It's very intuitive thanks to the complete list and all of the displays you get. You can organize yourself very easily and you know how to touch e the data, which data, how. So you would always follow my analogy. You create the channel first, uh, enter the products, uh, maintain or update the nodes, and sooner or later you release it. Well, next uh, uh, step um, I would like to briefly touch upon is um, how we really implemented this with a uh, customer. I unfortunately cannot give you the name of the customer, but I do hope that uh, this time will come and maybe you'll uh, see this customer at the print day and uh, can chat uh, them up. It's um, a, a, a major pen manufacturer, or stationary manufacturer. Uh, in types of prototype, we um, uh, opted in favor of a price list in order uh, to make everything understood. Uh, in the river implementation, uh, we actually follow the big to uh, the too big to small. Um, so we think of the big thing and then start with the small things and then through iterations we enhance it. Here you can see the price list that we created and the structure that goes with it. Then products um, uh, were included in the structures and then we looked uh, how we can get out the products. Um, this is what it looked like. We have an ERP and we have in River with the products and the images and uh, the print suit and we have an InDesign for release. First step, um, uh, we got the prices with uh, in River. They are only forwarded. Sometimes the users don't even see that and it's not interesting. It's just that we can compile them for the print which we do and did in the next step. So through the REST API, the products and the images were transported to the print and with uh, this also the prices. One challenge uh, that we always face is that the in-river images um, were not available as binaries, uh, but only as public URLs. So the images are only existent as links in the system. So uh, to comply with a single source of truth, which actually causes a problem in InDesign. So again, you have to actually find a tool um, uh, to make this available. And as the last step, uh, through the comet, uh, commit, um, the product data, the images and the prices are loaded to the InDesign. And what you get is this. As I said before, this is a simple price list, but you can already nicely see that the data come from the PIM system. We have the images, we have the headings, the EN, EAN codes, the article numbers. Very important. You can't see though um, the beautiful pictograms that are always very, very important because you really want to see the characteristics uh, of such a product at, at a glance, so to speak. And then the product research uh, of the Comet uh, on the right hand side the price list has been created, it works, so that we can continue with the next implementations now. So this means uh, we have gone all the way, um, created the channels, created the publications, and this is what it, what it would look like at the very end. Well, I was pretty fast with my presentation, as I can see now. <laughs> Are there any questions? As I said, it's not rocket science. I could uh, tell you more, but I, I don't think it would be very helpful. But maybe you have some, um, some profound questions. Yes. You uh, said that you're pushing data to the to the channels. Are they connected or linked? Yes, they are. Uh, the data model uh, is uh, referred to as a flexible model. You have entities, products, uh, articles, images, but also the nodes are considered uh, entities and they're all linked. 
and the link can also contain information if I so wish and uh, this is how you build the data model through linking um, and when I release at an interface then I can also check and see the linked entities two levels down and two levels up another question of the mic comment of the mic Well, this is real time. You access the system through the REST API and when I send my request through um, REST API, then I get uh, the um, th from the system. And this is really current. But this is the question of how you actually set the request. If you say I, I do it more frequently than I do it several times a day, if you say I don't update so often, then you can do it once a day. But the REST API is real time. I can always get my information and this is always current. Any other questions? Again, question without a mic. Yes, says the speaker. It uh, works the same way. It makes no difference whether you connect the print suit, which is recommendable because we're here not, not for nothing, but uh, the print module by Werk 2, um, who uh, works in the same way. It's a middleware that uses the REST API to get the data released. The middleware can be adapted, it can be modified, and then it's pushed into InDesign and the templates. It's always the same pathway. You can actually replace the modules though, the way you wish it. We personally um, uh, saw the implementation with print a lot, but uh, we've only um, implemented the print suit ourselves so far. Yes, other questions please? Can you recommend when you should use one or the other? Mm, that's difficult uh, to say. It really depends on your taste, I'd say. The um, Indie uh, works with Easy Catlet. So instead of the commit, uh, which actually pushes um, the data into InDesign, um, uh, you have the other system. Whether you want to work with commit or Easy Catalog, that's uh, that's your choice. And um, how you want to work with the middleware, what uh, you find more appealing. In terms of functionality, I think it is uh, pretty similar, I think. Well, then, if there are no more questions, uh, you can also approach me later through LinkedIn or the like. And then thank you very much.